won that game. Hayden won that game. So he he probably knows the better adjustment that he has to make. Yeah, I think that he went for a matchup, a more defensive matchup. I think he knew that the Mega Gardevoir was going to come. It's the only Mega Pokemon, like you stated before, on Toller's team, like the only possible Mega, I should say. And uh, he just prepared for that. Yeah. He said, you know what, I'm going to play defensive the first game. The first game is, I think it's always cool to kind of play a little bit more defensive because you get that information. Pokemon is a game about gaining information. Yeah. So if you can take that first game, play it slow, try to find out items, moves, etc. I mean, we are in Day 2 Swiss, so there's a little bit more information that was presented Mm -hmm. yesterday absolutely but still when you're in the moment and in that game you still want to take game one and if you want to if you can get the win like like Caden did that's awesome but he was also able to get as much information as possible right and one thing to note you know Toller's going to be a bit more careful about bringing uh, all sorts of special attackers uh, yep. you know if you look at Toller's team you know Politoed Aegislash, even Amoongus, Gardevoir, and Thunderous, you know, they're all special attackers. Yeah. And we saw the light screen coming in from that Cresselia, so Hayden made a very good call right there to, you know, turn one, set up that light screen, you know. He's gonna try to reduce the amount of damage, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Toller possibly bring Landers just to have some sort of physical attacker in position to, you know, bypass that light screen and just hit physically instead. Definitely. We're not sure if if, if he has, if the Cresselia has the reflect on it. We've only seen the light screen, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised. We did see Taunt late game against that Aegislash. I wouldn't be surprised if he just leads with his Taunt user just to make sure that he can taunt that thing, but we're going to see the Rotom and the Salamence open up for Hayden, and we're going to see the Thunders and Guard War, so he did lead with that taunt user. Yeah, and that was a good call right there from Toller. You know, he does not want that light screen to come up again. Uh, we do see the Intimidate come off, but, you know, Guard of War and Thunders, they're both not they are not physical attackers, so, yeah. you know, they don't mind that Intimidate at all. Uh, this Wash Rotom right here, though, you know, it is going to be moving pretty fast. It, it is Choice Scarf, because last game we saw it move before that Guard of War, yes. right? So... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to try to do here because both these Pokemon, Gardevoir and Thunders, they can be trained to be very specially bulky, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things about that, um, you know, if there's a lot of Intimidate in the metagame, in the format right now, a lot of players are going to switch to using special attackers to bypass those yes. Intimidates. And, you know, it's kind of this dynamic thing where once you see a lot of special attackers, you start training in special bulk, right? Yes. It's cool because Pokemon's not like a, a, a mold. Like, you don't just have one team and bring it as often as you can. You have to kind of change and evolve with the current metagame, what players are bringing and what they're using, uh, and, and follow suit in that regard if you see a lot of Intimidate. We're going to see the Mega Salamence come out uh, for Hayden, and then we're going to see, of course, the Mega Gardevoir come out for Toller. Now, I mean, Gardevoir has a great type of matchup here. It's got the very uh, super effective high voice that'll hit that Salamence if it can manage to hit that Salamence. We know that Rotom is going to outspeed it, though. Salamence is going to go for Protect, and we're going to see what that Rotom is going to do because I believe it is the fastest Pokemon in the field. Gardevoir is going to Protect as well. So Gardevoir putting its guard up, making Gardevoir's guard. You're like, huh, huh. Uh, Thunder Wave is going to come through, but Salamence does protect itself. And Rotom's going to go for the Volt Switch on the Thunderous slot, getting out of there. That is beautiful Switch initiative. Uh, since we're, we're pretty confirmed that Rotom is definitely Choice Scarfed at this point, uh, it's 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 cool to see Volt Switch. It's just a great move to get in, get out, do some damage, yeah. and bring in something that likes the situation a bit more. It's, it's a momentum swing, right? Definitely. And right now... You know, Hayden's seen what Gardevoir and Thunders are trying to do. You know, you see the Gardevoir protect, we see the Thunders go for Thunder Waves. Uh, Hayden now can switch in whatever he thinks can best combat that, right? Yes. Uh, looking at his team right now, you know, you have that Cresselia, which would be a pretty good switch right now, I think, if he does have it in the back. Uh, Heat Ram would also be a pretty good switch, too. Aegislash can come in and hit pretty hard. So he has a lot of options right now, that, yeah. and that's one thing that you always want to see in these in these battles. You know, you want options to be able to do things. You don't want to be locked into to making a bad move. You don't want to back into a corner, and that's one of the things that Volt Switch really allows you to do. You know, it could also help you bypass Intimidate if 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 you know, the timing is right. Definitely. And we're going to see the Aegislash does come in for Hayden. So just a, ma a, a Pokemon that just enjoys being on the field right now because of its sky-high defenses while in shield form. Yeah, and... That was a very smart play right there from Toller to Thunder Wave into that Salamence slot. Unfortunate that Hayden read that Thunder Wave coming and decided to protect that Salamence that yes. turn. Uh, getting a paralyzed Salamence out on the field, you know, that's going to be a lot less intimidating, and that's going to allow Gardevoir to be able to outspeed that Salamence and possibly pick up the knockout with that Hyper Voice. Definitely, definitely. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see now because the Thunder Wave is going to be on Hayden's mind. Uh, and he just put that Rotom Wash in the back, which of course is immune to Thunder Wave. So are we going to see that switch in for the Salamence? We're going to have to find out in just a little bit. Salamence is going to come back. Are we going to see that Rotom? Rotom Wash. Uh, we are going to see Rotom come in, kind of predicting that Thunder Wave. We'll see if Toller read that. Instead, Toller goes for the Thunderbolt on the Salamence slot, so guaranteeing some damage, doing over 50% to that Rotom. That is huge on a Choice Scarf Pokemon. And a Psychic doubling up into it. It's going to pick up the Knockout. No more fast washing machines on the field, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to see, though, did that come at a cost? I believe it did, because the Aegislash is going to go ahead, change its form, and fire off a Shadow Ball into the Gardevoir slot, and that is going to do a sizable amount of damage. But Gardevoir, that dress is just 
pl uh, plated with like steel defenses, so you know it's just you know it's <laughs> thick. It's like special armor. So it did not gonna not gonna pick up the KO there. Yeah, and that was a very good read right there from Toller to double up into that Wash Rotom slot. You know, I mean, Hayden probably thought, you know, he, why not? He has to Thunder Wave that Salamence slot. He has to paralyze that Salamence in order for Gardevoir to even have a chance to come in and pick up the knockout. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Hayden just switched in and Toller was like, I'm not having any of that. You know, mm -hmm. I can see that you still have that Wash Rotom in the back. Right? Yeah. He knows that that wash room is going to come in and says, goes for the Thunderbolt, goes for the Psychic, picks up the knockout on a less bulky Rotom. Definitely. So, you know, that's one of the causes of going for that Choice Scarf Rotom. It's really important for trainers to be able to recognize that in the middle of the match. You, you can see that the Rotom is uh, offensive in its choice, so it's not going to be bulky. It's not going to be specially, it's not going to be defensively trained. So you're going to want to take advantage of that and double up into it on a predicted switch like that. So beautifully played turn by Toller for sure. And the Heatran does come out for Hayden, which uh, is a little bit of a problem. For him. Yeah, and again, you know, these are two Pokemon that Gardevoir does not enjoy facing nope. off against. Uh, Thunderous, you know, could taunt the the Aegis Slash, so uh, Hayden might be a bit more careful about you know King Shielding here because yeah. Taunt will still bypass that King Shield and that's going to lock Aegis Slash into attacking again. But well, we saw it do a good amount of damage to that Gardevoir. You know, a lot of players are opting for the more uh, offensive Life Orb variant, but th this is not that variant. So uh, if it had the Life Orb, it could have done a lot more damage. Not exactly sure how this Aegis Slash is trained, so we're just going to have to see. And Toler decides to switch out that Gardevoir. Yeah, we're going to see Gardevoir uh, go back to Toler's Pokemon, uh, and Politoed's going to come out to the field here. Going to set up that rain because Heatran, uh, he doesn't want any spread heat waves coming on hitting both Pokemon. Now Politoed will resist it, and of course, uh, the rain is going to make that damage even less. So Thunder Wave is going to come through and actually paralyze the Aegis Slash from that Thunderous. Uh, we're going to see that he did not go for the King Shield, so he's still in offensive mode. He's going to try to fire off an attack after this heat wave. Uh, heat wave not going to be doing too much but Thunderous is going to get brought down below 50% so he's going to munch on that Citrus Berry and restore some of that damage that he just took. Uh, will the Aegis Slash get fully paralyzed here? It is not. It's going to get a Shadow Ball off with that Sky High Special Attacks that it's going to do a good amount to that Thunderous but Thunderous is just one of those Pokemon that's kind of hard to take down. Yeah, and that was a good switch right there from Toler. I mean, coming in, you know, he sees the Heat Wave coming. That's going to put a lot of pressure on this Heat Ran right now, right? Yeah. Uh, heat Ran is going to be possibly hit with a very powerful Water-type attack from Politoed. You know, a Scald coming into Heat Rain's way, that's, that might even pick up the knockout from this range. Uh, we do see Aegis Slash not King Shield right there, that's a good yep. call right there from Hayden because, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's a prediction game, right? You know, you, yep. don't want to, you don't want to King Shield at the, at the wrong time. Yeah, you don't want to King Shield and be taunted because then you literally are just wide open for an attack. But at this point, we do see that he didn't see the taunt last time, so he's going to go for the King Shield and it does pay off for him. He's going to be protected. Another Thunder Wave is going to come through though, which uh, is going to paralyze that uh, heat, heat Ran, both slowing it down and potentially getting some full paralysis here as secondary. Heat Ran does get fully paralyzed, that secondary effect coming through, and an Ice Beam uh, kind of predicting that Zalman switch in, uh, but does not come to fruition. Yeah, and you know, I'm. you could have scalded right there to be safe, but you know, wants to get that Salamence on the switch, because Salamence is still a problematic Pokemon for Toler, Definitely. and you know, I mean, how, how hype would that be, you know, to get that Salamence on yeah, that switch? Yeah. Uh, a lot, we, we're seeing a lot of predictions right here, but you know, both players are playing extra careful. They don't want to lose Pokemon. They don't want to lose at all, like at the wrong time. Yes, I, th I think that if, if I think the Scald uh, into the Heat Ram might have been a bit of a uh, safer play, but he's on the main stage. He's excited. That Ice Beam prediction would have been awesome. But a Scald, of course, even if the Salamence came in on that slot, a burn could have happened, and that would have been awesome. But we're going to see a Thunderbolt go into the Aegis Slash slot, uh, as well as a Scald going to the Heat Ran, just barely missing the knockout, leaving the 36 uh, HP. We're going to see an overheat from that Heat Ran, dishing out a good amount of damage to the Thunders. In the rain, though, it is still going to be able to pick up that knockout. Oh my goodness. Heat Ran Special Attack does drop, though, by two stages, so it's not going to be putting out much pressure unless it switches out now. Uh, Aegis Slash is is going to chain stances, but will it get its attack off? Uh, it will get its Shadow Ball off onto the Politoed, dishing out a good amount of damage. Not going to pick up the knockout because that frog is just fat. <laughs> it's just a fat frog. Yeah, and we do see Hayden target down that Thunderous. He knows that he does not want to get Salamence paralyzed, and you know Thunderous do carry uh, Ice type hidden powers to pick up knockouts on the Salamence. So. Uh, good identification right there from Hayden to you know see who the bigger threat is. Politoed is going to be a threat, but at this range, you know a double edge or return or you know a really strong attack from that Salamence could pick up a knockout on Politoed. Uh, we see Aegislash Slash come in right now against two paralyzed Pokemon, uh, paralyzed Aegislash Slash and the paralyzed Heatran. You know Aegislash Slash is going to have a field day right here because it can yeah. pick up a knockout on, on one thing really. Yeah, I, I think that was a beautiful switch, and especially after seeing Heatran special attack. Uh, drop by two stage, it's no longer going to be able to dish out too much damage to Aegis Slash anyway. Especially uh, if, in the rain. Especially in the rain, even if it is living, but that Politoed is not even going to have any of that. It's going to go for the Scald and pick up the knockout on that Heat Ram. We're going to see the Aegis Slash did stay in uh, sword form, but uh, Toller's Aegis Slash is going to go for the Substitute, really just setting up, wanting to take advantage when that Salamence comes in, but uh, Hayden's not going to have that either, so going to knock out that Substitute uh, with a Shadow Ball. 
Uh, that is that is definitely, I, I think Toller made the right call trying to set up that substitute because it would have been awesome had either a full paralysis or had he gone for uh, King Shield and switched into defensive form. Uh, but instead, we're going to see the Salamence come out here and uh, Salamence is a scary Pokemon. Yeah, Salamence right now is in really good position. He can pick up a knockout on that Politon most likely. And Aegislash right now threatens with, well, Aegislash on Hayden's side is going to threaten with a Shadow Ball onto Toller's side. You know, we do see that that Aegislash is paralyzed, so that's going to be moving after uh, Toller's Aegislash. So uh, Hayden right now kind of with a back against the wall, you know, Toller's in pretty commanding position. He still has one Pokemon in the back, too. Yeah. So... To Toller's, Toller's done a really good job keeping the advantage this game. Uh, the paralysis speed control is a huge thing in VGC. Definitely want to be able to take advantage. Uh, even, I mean, the secondary full paralysis is always nice, right. but that speed control is what's really important because it does, like you said, it makes Toller's Aegislash feel a lot more comfortable on the field, but we're going to see Hayden's Aegislash just go for the King Shield. Uh, I, the, the mind games there, not going in for one turn, going for it in the next turn, uh, make, trying to tempt Toller into going for the Shadow Ball. We're going to find out what he did. Salmons is going to go for a return on that Politoed, and Politoed does not like a return, so he's going to get KO'd by that Salamence. Just a monster. And we're going to see Aegislash go for the attack. The question is, did he target down the Salamence and predict the King Shield? He does go for the Shadow Ball on the oh. Slash. So that is definitely an unfortunate prediction for Toller right there, and an unfortunate one for Hayden. Yeah, and that was a bit of risky play right there, because, you know, Hayden, or Toller's Aegislash possibly could have even set up a substitute if he really wanted to there. Yeah. Uh, you know, he is going to win that Aegislash battle if he can somehow get that Aegislash into Blade form, right? Because, you know, Toller's Aegislash is going to outspeed Hayden's Aegislash, so yes. uh, in shield form right now, actually, it's Hayden, close. Yeah, it's close. Like it, it all comes down to what's going to happen between these Aegislashes. Like if Aegislash is in blade form on Hayden's side, it's going to stay in blade form or sh shield form. It's going to stay in shield form, while Toller's, you know, Aegislash is going to be in blade form. So a Toller's Aegislash is going to hit Hayden's, but then Hayden's is going to be able to hit Toller's. While you know, it's there's just so many swords right. and shields on the it's, field, dude. It's so hard to just pronounce shield that over and blade. over again. Yeah, shield, shield versus, versus blade. blade right now. We're just going to do that. Right. Shield versus blade. So we're going to see that blade turn into a shield right now because we're just done with this name. Uh, King Shield, of course, is going to make it so that it's not going to take any damage. That last turn, had he gone for the Shadow Ball, knowing that he has the Gardevoir in the back, uh, which doesn't outspeed the Salamence, it's going to get knocked out. Uh, the Gardevoir could have potentially gone for the Protect that turn and uh, just risk the Biscuit and let Aegislash go for the double Shadow Ball on Salamence. But it looks like uh, Hayden is in a, an extremely good spot here having a 2-1 matchup right now. Yeah, and even though Salamence can't really hit Aegislash too hard with that return, uh, you know, again, it's, it's going to come down to these eight, two Aegislashes on the field. Uh, right now, since Toller's Aegislash is in shield form and Hayden's Aegislash is in blade form, right? So Toller's going to be hitting Hayden's Aegislash a lot harder. And, you know, the Aegislash on Toller's side is going to be outspeeding. I hope one person the out there is following this because. It's an Aegislash battle. It's a it sword is. battle it, right it's now. It's a sword battle. It's literally, we're, we're, we're sitting here. There's You hear clink, clank, clink, clank. Some swords going on there. Iron sharpens iron. That's all these two players are trying to do right now on the main stage is sharpen each other. Have a little friendly competition, but I think everyone wants a slice of the pie. The $2 million uh, in scholarships and et cetera prizes that are on the table to be held, uh, grabbed a hold of through these events. Right. And, and, you know, the pride of becoming the national yes. champion, too, right? The pride. The pride is huge being able to say, I am a national champion. I think both players are itching to be able to say that. Go home, tell their parents, tell their friends, I am a Pokemon national champion. And it's just, it's such an awesome, awesome feeling. We're going to see Hayden does go for that King Shield uh, as Salamence go reveals the Earthquake. So it's going to have a way to hit that Aegislash with super effective damage. It's going to bring it down to around 40%. It's a crit! Uh, Substitute is going to come out from that Aegislash, though. And uh, it's going to be kind of safe behind there for just a little while longer. But now that we've seen that Earthquake, uh, Hayden's just in a great position. Yeah, Hayden revealing that earthquake really late into the game, and you know, I, I'm pretty sure Toller thought that he was pretty safe yep. with that with that Aegislash. But right now, you know, the Salamence and that Aegislash are going to put so much pressure. Uh, of course, Aegislash on Hayden's side could be fully paralyzed too. You know, like you said, that secondary effect of paralysis could kick in, and that could swing the game really. So right now. Toller knows he has to put that pressure by knocking out that Salamence. Definitely. That's why that one turn earlier, had he gone for the Shadow Ball into the Salamence, uh, would have been huge because that would be that would be the pressure he would have needed doing over 50% to that Salamence. It would have been an easy 2 KO. So uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for Toller to come back from this one. Right. And it was a tough decision, too. I mean, yeah. it's definitely mind game, like you say. You know, Aegislash versus Aegislash with one more Pokemon on the side. You know, when, 
when's the Age of Size going to King Shield? When's the Age of Size going to switch into Blade Form? So, you know, it was a tough call. It was yeah. a super tough call. It's definitely a super tough call. It's easy. Hindsight is 2020. We're going to see a Draco Meteor come out from that Salamence, connecting onto the Age of Slash. It should be enough, thanks to the same type attack bonus, to take out that substitute, even though it's not very effective. It's another crit just for salt in the wound. I can taste it from over here. Uh, it's completely, completely irrelevant. But, you know, sometimes salt is just a thing that we got to deal with. Uh, we're going to see Toller's Age of Slash become a sword, go for the Shadow Ball. It is going to connect on the Age of Slash at this point, but it is not going to be able to pick up the knockout. We're going to see right now that is a weakness policy boost. So, it, as although he doesn't need it now, it's cool because we're seeing all this information in the end of the second game. So Hayden did not have to reveal that at all. Uh, and we're going to see the Shadow Ball right now uh, come through and pick up and finish up this set. A uh, 2-0 in Hayden's Hayden's favor. We can hear the audience clapping because we know both these players are of such high caliber. They're going to shake hands because this is, once again, it's about the game we love. It's friendly competition. It is competition though. Right. So congratulations to both those players for making it this far. It was a really good battle. I mean, it was a really good series between the two players. I mean, we, you had two 